Hey everyone, this guide is going to be about using Rails 7 and the new Hotwire framework, so to speak, under the hood. The main thing we'll be covering is Turbo behind the scenes, which is kind of a um, predecessor to Turbo Links, if you have any history with Rails at all. And the way Turbo Links essentially worked is it would like hijack the request and inject HTML and whatnot into the page per like link click or button click. And um, that was kind of just a, a more mm, perceived way to make an app like Rails, which is server-side rendered, perform qu more quickly. Um, typically in a server-side world, there's just this whole you know construct of the request and then painting the screen with like your HTML, the whole DOM structure, then of course your, your style sheets and your JavaScript. So Turbo kind of enters that realm and does more than just like links and buttons and responds to a lot of different requests like with forms by default now in Rails 7. So assuming you don't bypass this whole framework, Turbo is going to come stock in a Rails 7 app. And that's what I'm going to basically walk through today. If a basic guide on how to use it, more of a one-on-one. So um, the reason you might want to use this is just to, you know, do um, less JavaScript driven uh, techniques on your app. Um, and for people that are, you know, in the Rails world, they're kind of not so fond, I guess. Maybe I'm wrong, but a lot of, of developers I've seen um, aren't a huge, huge JavaScript fans. So they'll want to do something different or just use sprinkles of JavaScript, which is kind of the stimulus framework that's part of the Hotwire uh, stack, so to speak. Um, stimulus is like JavaScript, but it's more of a Rails model. So it's got this controller like feel to it if you're used to Rails at all. And then Turbo, again, like I said, hijacks the requests. Um, it allows you to update certain things on the page in real time. So it's using frames in the background, which are actually legacy HTML elements that allow you to load things like within a page from another page and, and whatnot. So it's kind of old tech come new again. And it's interesting to see. Um, but combined with that, we've got uh, three kind of categories with four if you're into the native space like uh, iOS and Android, which I won't be covering in this guide. I, I don't know that I will because I'm not really one of those kind of developers. But if you're ever interested, there are some handy guides out there that kind of walk you through that. I will say that the documentation is great, but it also isn't very verbose. So you might find yourself struggling just to look at the docs and understand exactly how to wrap around conventions and techniques of doing things. It's kind of geared towards not specifically to Rails uh, developers. This this could be plugged into other apps as well, but you will find it by default in Rails. So it's kind of unique to that. And I recommend, there's a video on the front page of Hotwire to kind of walk through some of that where DHH goes through some of it. Take some time and do that. I think it kind of puts more perspective than probably what I'll show you, but we'll see. Maybe my, my guide here will give you some good perspective of the basics anyway. Um, so Turbo Drive in particular, let's see, accelerates links and form submissions by negating the, no, the need for full page reload. So that's kind of what Turbo Links did like, like historically. So that's not so much new, but probably enhanced a bit. Turbo Frames would decompose a page and into independent context. You could update certain things on a page and be lazily loaded. So it's a way to kind of target something on the page with a unique identifier and update it with a request as opposed to just re-rendering the whole page like a common older school Rails apps would do, like a, a redirect pattern. And then Turbo Streams allow you to use um, web, web sockets. So the action cable component under the hood that came with Rails, I think Rails 5, I could be wrong. And it allows you to kind of have that, that server-side rendered app, but still function as a, you know, a real-time app. So you can do things like chat applications or stuff like that. That's the common like use case, but there's plenty of reasons to use Turbo Streams. Like, um, so you get that common like two, two browser windows up, someone else comments on something and you could see it pop up in real time. If you've ever used Basecamp, for example, you'd see a lot of that happening. Um, if you're like typing a comment and then someone else just goes ahead and comments before you, it's it's real time. It's pretty neat. And of course, Turbo Native, it's just lets you hook into some components based on the iOS and Android ecosphere and just allows you to hook into it, basically. That's what I think Basecamp uses for their mobile apps. So it allows them to kind of have one stack and not so much rewrite apps for specific platforms, which is very handy, I'm sure. 
and probably a big reason it exists. So yeah, that's like an overview of what Turbo is. Um, in this guide, I'm, I basically create the infamous to-do list and just wanted to sh walk you through how it all works. Add to your list, hit enter, and it just happens instantly. If you mark complete, that happens instantly. Deleting happens instantly. So all that stuff is what you might expect from like a JavaScript driven app, but this is all server-side code. Nothing really JavaScript about it besides some underlying stuff where you're using um, turbo frames where it targets certain elements. It's wrapped in Ruby, so you don't really write JavaScript, but under the hood, it's probably doing some for you. So that's essentially it. Um, I, it's a very simple app, but to get used to the structure of how turbo frames works, it's probably worth going through something simple first to start. And so that's what I'm gonna go through. So I'm gonna create a new app. It's gonna be, I'm gonna use the tailwind Default, so Tailwind Rails gem, so that's gonna be the CSS underlying hook. Um, and that's gonna come with a scaffold that is kind of opinionated, but we'll, we'll you know, make some updates. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna call it turbo to do's, and then pass the Tailwind framework as a flag for a dash C would be Tailwind in this case, and that allows you to make the new app. Again, I'm running Rails 7, so that's pretty important to do this um, in, in that version of Rails 7.202. I think it's the latest version, but I could be wrong. Um, I have this server running in this view. I'm just gonna go ahead and close that one so we can start fresh. Okay, CD into turbo to do's. We could run the server just um, since it's using Tailwind CSS, it's gonna use uh, CS, CSS bundling under the hood, and that allows you to use this thing called a proc file which just is another way to use another gem called Foreman that runs multiple processes in one command line instance. So if I run bin dev, for instance, it starts up to two processes in the background. One's being the Rails server and the other is the CSS framework um, we're using, which is Tailwind, which is running in the background too. So we don't have any constructive to do's yet. So we'll get the basic starting page with Rails. And again, it shows out um, all the the versions of stuff I'm using there. So to get started, I want to first create a scaffold that's going to be called to do. So um, Rails, let me clear this, generate scaffold, and I'll call it the model will be to do, and we'll set a status, or I'll just call a title, whatever the to do is, and then a status of integer. That'll allow us to set a complete and incomplete type of status on it, which we'll use as an enum. Um, if you've seen, uh, I don't know if you followed along the latest videos, but I just published another video called on, on enums. If you're not familiar, I definitely recommend checking it out. It's a really cool feature uh, built into rails and Ruby actually. So I'll run this and we'll scaffold out a whole structure for to do's. It does the whole, whole thing. So full crud model, um, that allows you to create, edit, delete, update, and destroy. Um, I think I said delete there try twice, but you know what I mean? So that essentially gives us a to-dos route. If we go to bin dev and boot up the app, to-dos. We need to run migrations, of course. So I'll do that real quick. And we've got the base scaffolding um, and it just has some basic styles built with Tailwind. And I looked at those and can't say I'm a fan of how they did it, but maybe I'll make a pull request or something. Okay, with that done, I actually want to roll back the migration. I got a little trigger happy there. So Rails DB uh, rollback. And I want to set a default status on that to do. So let's open up our code editor and put it in this window, this window. In our DB folder, I will go into the migrate folder and then the latest migration should be only one. And we'll set a default to zero. Um, enums work in an integer fashion. Since we set it as an integer, it's going to be, um, you know, denoted by a number instead of like an actual string or something. You could use strings, but these tend to be faster in terms of uh, database queries and whatnot. So now we'll run Rails db migrate once more. There we go, and that gives us just the default on the schema. If you look in here the schema that has migrated as of this version looks like so. So that's the basic bit out of the way um, to make our, our lives easier and not just go to the slash to do's the whole time. I'm going to go into my routes and update the default root route to be um, to uh, to do's index just like so. 
All right, and we can just keep the server running. I keep closing it, could probably just open a new window, but there we go. Now our root route is the localhost 3000 route. And then what I wanna do is go into our basic index path and update what it looks like here. I'm gonna just omit the, the present bit for now, the notice I mean, which if I were to build this app out, I'd have like a global flash uh, protocol with that as opposed to this. So I'll actually just really dumb this down. Keep the ID on that. And then I'll have a class divide Y and then list none. And we'll, inside that we're rendering to do's. So this is convention rails. It's kind of going to go ahead and assume that you have a partial called to do in your to do's folder based on the routing, all the, the controller logic and whatnot in your app. Um, and that's just how that works. And then I want to set just a pretty high margin on this. Something like so. Then we'll say font bold that we'll set some margin on this. Realistically, I could just do it on this. So, okay. So pretty plain Jane right now, but we'll get to the other parts. We need to render, of course, the form to add a to do. So render form. And you can do that. Typically, this would go to like a new route. You'd click that button to go new, and then your form would be on that page. But in this case, I want to just establish the form to always be on the index. And a shortcut to do that is just to have a new instance right on the to-do partial. So then we get this bit. Um, one issue I want to fix with this layout is to pretty much clean it up completely. Um, maybe just like so. There we go. And I'll keep make that two. There we go. Now we did use just basic JavaScript import maps um, for this app. That's the basic default in Rails. You could use something like ES Build and whatnot. Um, there's a whole gem and documentation on it. I won't go into too much detail, but I just wanted to mention that. Maybe actually on that layout, I want to add some padding just for mobile sake. So once it gets down to very small screens, there's still some cushion on the edge. There we go. Okay. Now, finally, in the form, we want to um, update. Well, first, before that, I want to update the to do to be a little nicer looking. So if I add one right now, um, it'll create one, but it looks like this and then like that on the front page. And that's just ugly and too much junk on the page. So let's add a list item divs divs and not actual HTML. There we go. Uh, the DOM ID of to do will do a class of PY. And I'm going to get rid of status completely. We'll set that on the back end. We don't need to deal with that in the actual um, view here. Uh, we will add an edit button um, coming up, but I'm, I'm just going to leave it alone for now and just show the to-do title. So to-do title. And keep it as simple as that for now. So there it is. Okay, so we'll save that. And then in the form, I want to update a few things. So right here we have some basic stuff. I'm just going to actually delete, keep the error messaging. Um, it could be enhanced, but I'm not going to worry too much about it. I'm going to just remove the status for sure. And then we'll retarget this stuff in a minute. One thing I do need to add though, is an ID to this element. And you can add that in this, uh, the braces here. And then we'll use this Dom ID built-in uh, view helper that allows us to kind of add a unique identifier to the view. Um, and then we'll pass the to do in and then underscore form. So it allows us to have that unique bit ready to roll so that if under the hood, you'll see, I think I have a typo. Yeah. Should be a comma. And what else did I miss? I have some issue here that I'm not seeing. Why am I using back ticks? That's probably the problem. And I didn't need to do this. There we go. All right. So if we look under the hood in the 
you'll see form new to do form. So it just kind of has that instance of what is going on there. So with that done, we can go and add the bottom portion, which I'm going to make a little more fancy. So we'll have a margin bottom of six basic um, form element. And then I'm going to tweak the, they used to have, they're going to have a ton of classes, sorry in advance, but we'll actually put the label and make it a, a screen reader only and then wrap a div around these two so we can add some fanciness to the input and the button so this is going to look like a block shadow small rounded there's a lot of classes so i'll just try to type these fast placeholder on the element. Okay, and then our um, submit button is going to be absolutely positioned. So absolute top zero, right zero, just to throw it in the top right corner. And then on the button, we'll tweak it to look like this. So MT picks, it's a slight offset. I'm a pixel rounded full py4 px5 bg sky 100 text white font medium Okay, that needs to have a relative class on this div and then we'll be able to contain it within that bit. So there we go, we got our basic to-do list. Now submitting this right now, it's just gonna create a to-do and honestly it shouldn't be able to because we've got a blank one. So we'll get to that in a bit, but that's our basic UI at this point. Now on the controller side where we do a lot of the logic we'll be rendering um, a different response type. So. If you've had familiarity with Rails in the past, you know that there's a form respond to block you can pass. And here you can pass different types of formats. So typically in a server-side rendered app, it's either HTML or JSON or something like that. But you used to be, you could use a format.js and you'd make this file dot, like a create.js.erb file in your views folder. And that would kind of signal to the app that it's gonna to respond to JavaScript. So you wanna trigger that in the request to be like less of a, like a redirect kind of view and more of a trigger to fire this JavaScript thing on that click or a create action. So a lot of stuff to happen behind the scenes, but realistically what we're gonna do is just twice, um, actually remove the JSON. We don't need it for this guide, but we'll want to format dot turbo stream. So we'll start with streams first. And Without passing any type of block here, it's assumed you'll have a action in your view folder called create, and then it will have turbo stream dot erb. And that essentially is a way to, you know, keep your, your turbo rendered stuff in this place. And you could target multiple things, do multiple things in this file when this fires. Or if you want to, which I'll show you in a minute, you could do a render turbo stream response and then turbo stream, et cetera, pass your own partials. So you can render different parts of um, content to a page at a given moment and just target things independently. And that works all the same. It's just dependent on kind of your preference with that. So what I want to do in this view um, is append these new helpers brought to you by turbo called turbo stream prepend which is kind of a javascript um, term so prepend append um, 
insert after, insert before. If you come from any bit of JavaScript, you might be familiar with that kind of terminology. This is what that's doing behind the scenes. And we get to write Ruby instead, which is great, but I believe there's JavaScript under the hood that's doing some stuff for us. So what I want to do here is any to do that's added is going to be prepended to this list. So it'll target to do's, which is if you remember in our index file, it's looking for this ID and that's how you can pass that here. Um, and we'll render the new to do on top of that list because we passed the prepend. Now, if you said like insert after it would insert at the bottom, et cetera, you could do certain things here. Um, read, I would read the source code to understand all the things you could use with turbo stream actions like that. But, um, there's quite a few. So we're stream in this case, we'll do turbo stream dot replace. And here we need to update the form. So in this case, we're going to say, we don't need the brackets. We need to target that form ID. So Dom ID to do dot new. That's how we're targeting it. And then we remember we added form to that, uh, suffix, I suppose. So that allows us to then replace the current form with a new instance of the form. So we'll render the form in this case to do and then to do dot new. So essentially we're just doing some cycling of pushing HTML in this response. So when a turbo stream happens, the actual code that comes back over that they call the wire, hence the name hot wire, um, is HTML code instead of like JSON where you need to like hydrate the JSON and get the request with JavaScript to form, you know, to update the page. Instead, we can do it with straight up HTML and just kind of do it all in real time that way, as opposed to, you know, assuming JSON needs to be the, the lead ringer with that. So with this in place, it should give us, I hope, um, some real time looking UI here. Yeah, there we go. So that was just added. Um, we can't do any editing or deleting or anything yet, or market is done, but we did get the real time response of the turbo logic, thanks to these and this new format response. So the reason the rails would know to do the turbo stream response type is basically the fact that we have passed, um, this as the format. Um, if that didn't work, it would fall back to HTML in this case, which is kind of handy. So it's dependent on the ordering. So um, what would a to-do be without being able to edit it? We want to go ahead and allow for that. So what I'll do is go back into our um, to-do and we'll link directly to the to-do itself. This isn't super obvious that you would you know, know to do that, but what I'll do, actually, before I do that, we need to update the to-do DOM ID attribute. Um, coming up, we'll need this to be more unique than it is because we'll need to target it, target it to delete and prepend and whatnot. So instead I will add a new naming convention here. It'll be item. So to do item that gives us this under the hood to do one item. I don't love the naming convention with that, but I mean, it works fine for what you need. The idea of the to do is what gets passed here. So that's why there's uniqueness to it. And then finally within here, instead of the to do title, we, we want to actually wrap it in a turbo frame tag and we'll pass the, the Dom ID, which we just changed from here to this one instead. So we'll say to do just like, so use that in this case and wrap that title. Now we can link to the to do, and then I'll say edit to do path, of course, pass the to do. It looks like a lot going on, but essentially this is a turbo frame tag that's got a unique identifier. And what this is going to do a lot is allow us to click this link. It's going to respond to the edit action here. And because we added the turbo frame tag, Rails knows automatically that it's going to be a turbo frame response. And in that, it'll basically input the, the form right inside um, where the to do is at so we can edit it directly. 
Now to do that, we need to update our edit uh, view to kind of cor correlate with that. So our edit form quickly becomes uh, very simple actually. So I'll just say turbo frame tag, and then we'll add a DOM ID of to do. And the instance variable, again, is coming from the edit action. Um, it doesn't look like it's declared here, but if you see this before action, we're setting it for this method, which is actually setting it right here. So we're able to reuse it without actually writing it so many times in each action. It's kind of some basic Rails stuff. If you're not familiar with that, you might need to check out like the basics, basics before digging into something like this. And then we'll target, notice the same DOM ID attribute for the ID. We're going to target that directly here. So when you click the, the to do, it knows which one to, to swap, if that makes any sense. So the ID is kind of crucial in this case. So all we'll do here is just render the form again. Pass the to do through. Now the response is going to just go ahead and if we click on this to do, the form just propagates into view. And that's because, like I said, there's auto magically things happening. This turbo frame tag um, basically says, hey Rails, um, this is a turbo frame response. We want to inject something right on this page based on the DOM ID here. Since the get request behind the scenes to link to the edit path, it's going to go ahead and get that form and inject it into that same frame because we have this DOM ID attribute and this DOM ID attribute matching. So if I were to click this one, it would go ahead and get that specific instance instead of this one, you know? So um, that's kind of my sh probably shitty <laughs> way of explaining it, but I hope that was helpful, I guess. So there's a lot of magic with it, but it's pretty neat, I think. So here you can edit it. So I'll do a test one, two, three, it updates in real time and you're good to go. Second to do. I'll just do to do. Cool. So we're getting close already. A lot of cool features with that. Um, that real timeness is really neat to me. We could, for, like, similar to our create action, add a, a format to do for update. Um, because we were doing that type of request, though, it's kind of automatic. You don't necessarily need to declare it. Um, I noticed that lately that. I don't need to declare something like this in my update action for this some, something this simple anyway. I think Rails is kind of doing it by default thanks to the code we've writ, written in the, um, the turbo frame tags. And then the action here, it's just kind of understood in that case. So the update action is actually patching this stuff behind the scenes and updating in the database. So validation. Um, the next layer of, if we create a to-do, you can create an empty one. That's no good. We don't want that. So what I'll do is actually go and put a validation on the model. And I just like to write it validates title presence. I always get that spelling wrong. True. So now we'll get errors, but notice when I click that, it goes to the new to do action, even though we're on the index, it injects like the new um, view into the view itself, which isn't what we want. This code gets injected into that view. So instead, what I want to do is target um, with a block here that will be a little more explicit on how we render and what we render instead of actually not this one, but we need to, this is kind of what hap what's happening here. It's rendering this because the studio didn't save thanks to the validation. So it's you're hitting create right there. And then it's actually doing this, it did not save each issue. So it's rendering this form in HTML with this, um, you know, issue in your view. So what I'll do is combat that with a another format response of turbo stream, but we need to be a little more explicit with this one. So we'll pass a block and we'll render turbo stream. And on it, we'll do turbo stream replace. You can do it all in controller if you want. Um, and then we'll pass in an interpolated helpers that allows us to access this DOM ID thing in the controller layer. We'll pass the to do and then also the form. 
and then we declare it partial path, so form in this case. And then we need to pass local instance variables. So local to do, to do. So it's, this is essentially going through, finding that form, and replacing it on the page right there, since this has that, that DOM ID attribute of form. And then we'll inject the new form there. That's going to be the form like errors and stuff that's going to render right here. So that's kind of what's happening. Um, and we're able to pass a partial, um, thanks to the controlling logic um, of the to-dos, it knows to look in this folder for the form partial. And I need to do some better spelling. So in this case, we created new to-do. That didn't work as advertised. What did I do wrong here? Oh, I still have this. Don't think I want that. Maybe that's it. What's happening? Format turbo stream, render turbo stream. Turbo stream replace like so. There we go. So if we do this, there we go. Now our errors pipe through. And I apologize if the font size is not large enough. I'll try to make it bigger for y'all. Okay, so what I did there is it obviously rendered a typo, but I had a parentheses in the wrong place. So um, I was closing it too soon. But we're, we're basically targeting this form element already on the page, and then we're going to go ahead and replace it with the form partial that's in the, the queue here. And the reason we're doing that is because we want the error stat statuses that come back there instead of going to like the slash new um, instance each time. So the, um, the, the UI in this could be a lot better, but I'm going to leave it for, alone for now. Now we could also do the same thing with update. So if we do this and you update it to be empty, it's it's not gonna be the, the greatest thing, but it did actually automatically work for us there in that case. If you wanna be explicit with that, you could go and do the same kind of response. Get rid of JSON for now. And basically copy the same code there. And in this case, we'll actually replace the DOM ID of to do, and then it'll be, yeah, the form partial. So the same concept, um, this is kind of just a fall, fall back in case the automatic magicalness doesn't work. Okay, so deleting a to do, um, we wanna extend our to do partial to have a delete button, and we wanna do everything inside this turbo frame tag. Uh, that allows us to be very dynamic in that response. So what I'll use is a button to helper, and that's essentially going to embed another form onto the screen. And we'll just say delete and to do path, because we'll want to target a specific to do. And the important th uh, uh, thing to add here is method delete, so we know what kind of request the controller should be expecting, and that allows us to target the destroy action on the controller. I'll show you that in a second, but let's add some styles to this. Okay, that gives us a button uh, if I can type method delete class what am i missing here no route matches show shouldn't it be delete i'm going to make this items flex too so Why is that not working? It shouldn't be show. Oh, there. There we go. So now we have delete action. That's going to go and correspond to the destroy method. And by default, our HTML is going to redirect us back to the to do's URL, which is actually fine, but we want it to be a little more um, dynamic and
make them a little more dynamic. So what I'll do is for, uh, another turbo stream. We're going to come back and say format turbo stream. We'll render turbo stream turbo stream dot remove allows us to just remove it from the Dom. Again, we'll use helpers Dom ID pass the to do. And then remember we added that item suffix. That's how we're going to target it in this way. So that's where that's coming from. And that essentially allows us to just do it in real time. So now I can delete that one. It's gone, delete that one. It's gone and they're gone. So just like that, create one, delete one, delete. Pretty cool. All right. So we have that status column on the, on the app. Let's add, um, an enum to our model to denote what is actually going to take place on each status. So enum status looks like so, and I create a hash is my preferred way. So I'll say incomplete will be zero and complete will be one. And you could stack more here if you have different statuses, but obviously with to do's, it's pretty one or the other, I think. And then on the to do itself, we'll add some conditional logic. Again, we'll extend this to be a bit more verbose. Um, I'll have another flex item center. And we'll add, uh, since we got enums, uh, again, I have a video on this, uh, we can target the to do and call complete on it and just check if that status is that case or um, if not, we'll render something different. So in this case, we'll add a button to similar to what we had for the delete, but we're going to have a patch request with this one. So we'll say mark incomplete and I'll add some, the path will be to do path similar to our destroy action again. Um, this one's going to pass in the to do, and then we can actually pass the parameters straight through to this. So you don't have to really do much in the controller, um, up to you if you want to do that in the controller, like other logic as well. But this is a kind of a, a safe way to do it. I suppose, um, this is an exercise. This is how I'm going to do it. So method patch, and then the styles. So that's the incomplete state, and I think I typed that wrong. There we go. So the to do isn't complete because none of them are complete yet. But if not, we can have the same kind of element and just say mark complete. Actually, actually needs to be incomplete. and mark complete will be complete. We'll patch that request to, in this case, we'll do like a green. So then we should see mark complete there. Um, let's see space flex one. All right, let's do flex one on this. And then if it is complete, we can target the actual to do to look different. So the base class I want to add is flex one, which will stretch this whole thing over. So it pushes the buttons all the way to the other end. And then if it is complete, uh, I want to do a specific classes so we can target rails to kind of do some fanciness for us. So opacity 50, and then you can say like, if, um, to do dot complete. So if I, let me fix this actually. There we go. So I click this, it'll have that view. Um, I think I have VG neutral 50. 
I oh, wonder why that doesn't work. Okay. And then incomplete, it jumps back. So it's pretty sweet that, that that just all works, you know? So that's all within the complete status. Behind the scenes, our request is responding, you know, appropriately. So if I mark complete, we get a patch request to to-dos. It passes these uh, since we passed that um, object status in. And our controller and, and Rails just know what to do with that kind of shape. Um, it's... Um, a specific format when you pass that through that uh, rails is preferred to accept url encoded but like a specific weird type i remember dealing with it before with like javascript stuff um anyway let's um now uh, a small like enhancement here is if you have a lot of to do's um, they get added, but as you delete them, they're not really like in any particular order. And I'm not going to go too crazy, but like if I refresh the page, the incomplete comes first. But if I mark that one incomplete, it just stays where it's at. So they're kind of like not really in order, but maybe it'd be cool if the incomplete were at the end, you know. Um, and this could be enhanced a lot more with more turbo stuff, but I'm just going to make it like a default Rails looking thing for now. So in the index action, I'll actually do a little bit update on the query here and there's a nice one called in order of and I'll pass the status which is going to be a column we're going to introduce for this and then um, we could pass the incomplete status first and then the complete status so that will be how they render so because incomplete's first it'll actually be at the end and this isn't super in, in how depth, how I would maybe do it, but you could go as far as setting up a new turbo stream instance for to do's on the index. So how you do that, this is a little magical turbo stream. This is more of the action cable component. If you recall me in the beginning from to do's and that just essentially gets that set up so you can do streaming um, and then add in the model we'll actually do a um, callback so after update commit i'll call broadcast to or append to now whatever you use here could be probably different but append to worked decently it's not perfect i need to probably debug this a little more but i'm just going with the flow right now so as you mark these complete, they'll kind of jump ship um, down the down the list. Um, but the problem that I'm still trying to figure out, like I can mark one complete here, it'll jump to the bottom. But if I mark it incomplete or another one incomplete, it doesn't, you know, re um, order itself, which is unfortunate. So there's probably a way to, around that that I'm not. Honestly, I didn't go too deep in this guide on how to fix, but that's something to take into account. So I invite you to try to figure that out if you want to. But this will let you go ahead and, and um, at least get some ordering intact when you do make these, mark these complete and then refresh and they'll shoot down. So again, that could be enhanced. And I, again, invite you to check it out. But that's kind of the overview of how to use Turbo. Like I, it's not like crazy. But it does take some getting used to since there's a lot of conventions to be had and there's also some like magic with it so um in terms of like creating a file like this create turbostream.erb again you could just all do all of that in line here the problem is you couldn't do like multiple things so you might want to do uh, more than just that um, in this case so like you wouldn't want to throw all that in this block but you could if you wanted to so that's why that file exists i thought it made more sense to be in its own file so again, you could add multiple things here and update tons of stuff on the page if you want to. Um, but that's the power of it. It feels real great um, in terms of using it, updating things in real time. You get these awesome states that don't really depend on crazy JavaScript. So I think it's a, it's a game changer for the framework and uh, I'm excited to dig in more. So I hope this is useful. Uh, if you have any questions or need feedback on anything, feel free to leave comments and I'll see you in the next video.